Most anglers miss so many bass when fishing brush. Well, after watching this, you're not going to be one of them. First thing that we need to do, and it's super difficult, and I fall into this trap as well, is we have to unlock ourselves from that visual aspect of brush and laydowns. We get so keyed in on, on what we see that that's the first mistake that we make so often. The bass that I catch off of brush are out in front of it. When you've got a situation when you have brush in the water, lay downs in the water, there's usually a lot more of it out in front. This is especially true on river systems. And we need to attack this brush pile or these lay downs well off of the shore before we work our way up into it. Those first casts always need to be on that very outside edge or what we think is the outside edge. And so often that wood cover is gonna stretch two to three, four, five times farther out into the water than what we actually see. This is a great example right here. We can see this bass if we really look. I'll try, I try, try to zoom in here where you can see it. Look how far down in the water column and out this particular bass is sitting. You can imagine anglers coming into this particular bay and just pitching up to that visual cover again and again and again, and they are missing this fish every single time. The second thing that we need to do is think about how the current, and remember that's natural, wind-driven, or current from boat wakes, how is it hitting that wood cover. That's going to make such a huge difference in how bass position on it. We always think about cover as a current break, correct? Like they're on the down current side of it, you know, resting behind it. And that's true when they're in that resting mode or that loafing mode. But so often when bass are more aggressively feeding, they're going to be up on the front side of it. And depending on the complexity of the wood that you're fishing, there could be multiple areas like this. So often your most aggressive fish are going to be where that current is hitting, coming right into it. And then as they feed up and need to rest a second, they'll slip back to the current break side of it. So as you approach that cover, always think about that. Where's that current hitting? Where's that wind hitting? Where are the majority of the boat wakes hitting? And that's going to help position the fish. Third, is there cloudy water next to that wood cover? Now, not necessarily really muddy and dirty, but a perfect example is after a heavy rain. When these tributaries run into the river systems, run into our lakes, reservoirs, and ponds, there's often a band of cloudy water that's moving through the system. Sometimes it's all stirred up, but often you can find places that have clearer water and water that is cloudier. Well, one of the things I had always done in the past was find the clearest water I could. And that works, especially works when you have very dirty water conditions. You know, let's say, you know, flood waters, that, that front surge of a flood surge coming into a body of water. That's definitely true. Find the clearest water possible. But in clearer water or clear water situations, when we get that heavy rain, one thing that I have learned this past year by filming bass underwater is they were not in the clear water. They were in that cloudy water, that slightly stained water. It was full of life, all kinds of bass. We had bigger predators like pike, panfish. They're all in here. And the best that I can think of, and many of you had suggested when that video posted, was that they felt more secure, like they were using that cloudy water, that cloud line, that silt line, almost like protective cover. So when you're approaching wood, think about that as well. Do you have a stretch of laydowns in a clearer or a clear water situation where there is some cloudy water next to it? Number four is we have to realize when it comes to brush specifically, and also wood like laydowns, is bass are so focused on the edges. We really get this misunderstanding that we're flipping and pitching into heavy wood cover and yanking fish out of just a gnarly mess, when in reality, more often than not, that gnarly mess is up on the surface of the water, and if we look underneath, there is a lot of open water underneath, and that's where the bass are sitting. But if you can imagine our Texas rigs or jigs coming down through that top 
layer of brush, it gets to the open water underneath. That's where we catch the fish. And then when we pull them out, it appears or looks like we're pulling them out of much thicker cover than it really is. We can't underestimate how important those edges, those open water edges are underneath brush. And one of the things that I do that really help me figure out where these areas are is look for panfish. Panfish also like to hang out on this edge in this open water underneath that really thick brush surface layer. So don't underestimate that. And obviously one of the best rigs for fishing wood and brushy cover are Texas rigs. Well, if you want to watch a video how you can improve your Texas rig fishing, especially worm fishing, immediately go ahead and check this one out right here. And make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.